If you want to build a guitar that is an original, or even if you are just trying to modify a kit, stick around, because that's exactly what I'm about to do. As usual, I'll go step by step, and I'll be working with tools that you may have or probably have in your shop. I'm doing this as part of the great guitar build-off. So join me. Let's have some fun building guitars. I'm Yoav and this is The Electric Luthier. When some of my favorite guitar building YouTubers decide to do a great guitar build-off, I was excited to just follow along. But when it opened for unofficial challengers like myself, I had to jump in. In the words of Dan from Guns and Guitars, I'm already the winner, just by association. I'm sure many of you have been thinking of building an original guitar. With all due respect to all the classics, sometimes you want to break the mold and do things a little differently. You don't need to reinvent the guitar, but you can play with configurations, change the materials, modify the shapes, and just make it your own. The main challengers in the big boys and girl category are all using crimson kits as a starting point. Us unofficial challengers will just have to buy or make our own kits. So to kick this off, I have a kit that I've put together from parts and materials I already have. I'm going to be using a piece of Iroko butcher block. I've left from my home kitchen and bathroom cabinets that I've built a few years ago. Also known as African teak. This one is from Africa and it resembles teak and both character density and grain but it's not really botanically related the Rocco has a less uniform and slightly darker tone and the glued together pieces make a really nice combination in my opinion I'm certainly going to play up the natural look of the wood and not paint it opaque I'm thinking uh, true oil or something like that As far as hardware, I'm going to be going for an all-black hardware look with a hardtail bridge and the strings running through the body with black furls. I like that for both strength and for the intonation. As far as pickups, I have two pairs of slick humpbuckers and I'm yet to decide if I'll go with the active or passive pair. And I may do something with the little humbucker frames. We'll see about that. I also have a nice set of black locking tuners in a 3-in-3 three three configuration. As far as the neck goes, I have this nice paddle I bought a while ago, which can work here as a part of the kit. But I may have to make a new one from scratch as I'm not sure about the light colored maple fretboard for uh, this guitar. I did cut a slice of Iroko, which will be perfect for a fretboard, although it may be a bit too much. I also have this two-piece mahogany neck blank I salvaged from a bed frame I built 25 years ago. It's quite heavy, and as this guitar should be fairly light, I'm a little worried about neck dive. But I do want to try for a thin neck, so... I don't know. I do think the dark mahogany will be great with the Rocco though. This will also give me the opportunity to add those 23rd and 24th frets. As far as wiring, I'm not gonna go too crazy. I got two chunky 500k pots, a simple three-way switch, and I'll wire them up to something similar to a Telecaster but with two humbuckers. A thin profile two-way adjustable truss rod should be fine for this neck and I'm toying with the idea of adding some carbon fiber reinforcement and going for an extra thin neck. There are some more bits and pieces like vintage wires, screws for the neck, fret wire and so on. 
I will go into further details and specs for each part when we get to it. Well, this is my so-called kit, so let's get started. If you like where this is going, please give me a like and subscribe down below. And check out my website, theelectricluthier.com. You should probably also check out greatguitarbuildoff.com with all the challengers, progression, and trash talk you would expect with a charity-oriented competition. For the body, I've been playing around with ideas and considerations for numerous parts of the guitar. The elements I want to incorporate include extreme body contours. I personally can't understand why you would want to build a less comfortable guitar when you can have a more comfortable one. I want to take this concept a bit further and make it a very light and ergonomic guitar. The irregular shape. I've been liking the Jaguars, Mustangs and Firebirds lately and after finishing the design I've noticed that the closest resemblance is actually the Fender Meteora although I was honestly not looking at it. The monkey grip. Since the first time I saw Steve Weiss Ibanez, I loved the idea. I mean, how many times have you found yourself uncomfortably holding the horn of the Strat or the bass in the neck with a single cut body and made a note of how awkward and unbalanced it is? With that in mind, this is what I came up with. Now you can see the uneven body shape with the monkey grip integrated as a design element. What you can't see is all the carving I have planned. The holes will also work to reduce the weight, but there's going to be a very few, if any at all, flat surfaces on this body, which will also affect the weight and the thickness. If you think of a 3D aspect of the body, it's hard to put it into plan or template and I'll surely have some further R&D to finalize it and I just might need a mock-up or some kind of version first before I get to the actual body. As far as the neck is concerned, I'm a fan of a flat fender style headstock which eliminates the need for tilted headstocks. I also like the way Music Man solved the need for string trees or any other lowering devices for the longer strings. And I want to combine that with a 3 and 3 tuner configuration. As far as shape, I want the natural simplicity of uh, Brian May's Red Special. But since my tuners are going to be staggered and in line with the strings, it will need some fiddling around to get it right maybe something like this. Again, rounding and contouring will be added to give a more organic feel. There are still a few things we'll have to figure out and I'll do it along the way. To start off, I'll print the plan and start preparing it for the template. If you're like me and you don't have access to a full-size plotter, you can print it using the PDF printer in poster mode. Just make sure you're in full scale and not the default fit to page scale. You can also add the little hairline cut marks which will make aligning the puzzle pieces a little easier. I tape it all together and cut the contours. I have my daughter's small hands helping with the cutting and I'm hoping I'm not going to get disqualified for child labor. I also paste and cut the neck and now I'm ready to make some templates. I'll paste the paper to the 8mm MDF with spray adhesive. You can also just trace it. And then I cut along the line. I'm using my good old jigsaw. You can use a bandsaw if you have one and it will give you cleaner and more accurate cuts. But MDF is soft so I can easily sand it to the desired shape later without worrying too much about precision. I'm using a strong fan behind me for the heat, but it has the added value of blowing away all the toxic dust from the MDF. In normal temperatures and no adequate dust removal, it is highly recommended that you do use a good dust mask. 
I'm not too particular about staying on the line when sanding. I just want it to be smooth. I'll use my drill spindle for the inner curves and then give it a good finish by hand. The important thing with any template is to maintain a straight angle and that's why I always use some kind of a block or wrap the sanding paper around something round for the round areas. I have an old neck template with a similar shape and after giving it some deserved love I put it up against my plan to see if it'll work. Well it's a bit longer but the bigger issue is that while trying to maintain straight strings the two tuners in the middle are planned too close. Maybe that's why Petrucci's headstock has a foreign two tuner configuration. I'll be staying with the longer version and it will give me more room to figure out the final positioning of the tuners. You know, worst case scenario, I'll need a string tree or two. Now, to work out the final shape of the body and test out my new rasp, I'm not going to jeopardize my Iroko. I grab some pine I have from an old project and I'll use it as a prototype. There are a few issues I want to check out. The ergonomics. I want the body to be extra comfy and you really need to hold it against your body to be sure. I also want to figure out exactly where to remove and how much material for both design and structural reasons. I don't want it to be too thin and brittle. And I want to check the overall size and positioning of the cavities and switches. I cut out the shape and drill out the holes to get the rough shape. I want to route and drill everything that needs routing and drilling while the top and bottom are still flat. It makes the whole process a lot easier. Before I make the needed template, I make a few measurements only to find out that A, the pickups are not centered in relation to the neck. B, they're not the correct size for my humbuckers. And C, I didn't leave enough meat after the 24th fret and I risk chipping the end of the fretboard and, and I should know, I've done it before. So I'm going to extend the neck just a few extra millimeters and push the neck pickup back as well. This will cause the neck pickup to sound a bit more like a middle one, but that's what happens to all 24 fret guitars. So we'll see, or rather here. So I measure my actual pickups and redraw the actual size. I might as well have a snug fitting hole. I always print two sets of plans because you'll need at least two templates for most guitars. I drill and cut the neck and pickup cavities and then really take the time to file and sand them smooth while also making sure they fit the humbuckers. When done, I will mark them for pre-drilling and theoretically with a strong enough plunge router you can skip pre-drilling but in most cases and with the smaller routers it's highly recommended to remove as much material as you can in advance and let the router just do the finesse. I'm using a 25 millimeter or 1 inch Forstner bit with a depth stop. The Forstner bit makes a much cleaner cut even in larger diameters and doesn't have a long center tip like the butterfly drills. The depth stop is great for exactly these type of jobs. I want to drill just a bit less than I need so the router blade will later clean out the bottom and the little holes made by the tip of the drill bit. Since I'm using pine for the prototype or mock-up, I will use my trim router. It can handle it. I'll still do it in two passes and start with a very short bit. Now if you've made the template itself from thicker material, you'll have some more wiggle room with the depth at this point. Since I'm routing a few extra millimeters under the pickup for adjustment and wiring, I leave the rounded bit on and get a nice rounded bottom. I kind of like it. 
Of course, this will not work for the neck pocket, but it needs a deeper cut anyway, and the longer straight blade will be just perfect for that. I'm leaving the heel of the neck straight and will just slightly round it to match the radius of the router. I think it's 12 millimeters radius or so. Another part that I left out in both the plan and the templates are the control cavities. I'm going with a two-pot, one-switch, simple Telecaster style wiring. It's going to be a fairly tight fit and I'll make the main cavity template on the front side of my template. I also need a template for the inner part which should be routed first actually and which will have a small ledge and place for the screws or maybe the magnets. We'll see how that works out. I roughly figure out the position and cut out the template and then it's much more filing and sanding to get it to be half decent. I'm using an old Telecaster template that's out of commission but as long as it's lined up to the center line I should be fine. Remember this is a test so I can wing it a bit more than usual. Now it's time to pre-drill as much material as I can and then route it with my trimmer. I try the actual pots and see that the size is tight but manageable, although I will have to slightly reposition them. I drill a pilot hole and then flip it and make larger recessed holes for the knobs. Again, I want to go through all the drilling on flat surfaces before starting any carving. Now starts the fun part. I have this new convex rasp disc that fits on my angle grinder. This thing is nasty and rough. It will take a lot of material and can do a lot of damage if not properly handled. I'll even use my heavy duty leather gloves here. That's how much I love my fingers. On the other hand, when you want to remove a lot of material, especially in non-linear fashion, it will get you there fast. Now due to the unforgiving nature, I'm first testing and learning how to handle it on this pine body and not the actual Iroko. The colored wood I'm using is actually very helpful here as I can clearly see which part is still flat and untouched and I'll just sand it later. Aside from the classic elbow rest and belly contour, my main goal is to get the overall shape to be a little convex and thin as possible wherever possible. The only flat area will be the bridge and pickup area and I will leave some thickness at the bottom curve for comfort when playing seated. After the very rough disc work I'm off to some rough sanding. A 60 grit paper will help me remove all the rasp scratches and the dents to get a more even surface. The monkey grip will also require some extra attention and maybe some routing with a roundover bit. I'm still not sure if I want to give it a bit more definition for the fingers like the Ibanez ones. I did some more finishing off camera and this is what I came up with. I'm very happy with the prototype and that I did it. As much as I would have loved to jump on the body itself, I've certainly learned a few things and figure out a few more, which would have been either simple mistakes or compromises should I have not tested them first. I'll start with a positive. The general shape and curvature is just as I imagined it and it will both work and look awesome, in my humble opinion. I also think it will be light, I mean the pine might even be lighter, but it will be light and very comfy to handle. I want this guitar to really hug you back when you hold it. What I've learned, well, I think the overall size is just a bit small, to the point where the controls are squeezed in and the monkey grip 
will fit small hands, which it kind of works for myself, women and children, but I want manly hands to also enjoy it. The lower hole will have to either get smaller, maybe just an indent instead of going all the way through, or be removed altogether. Last is the output jack, which will require a thicker edge or shape to fit properly and work with the shape. Okay, it's back to the drawing board. Now join me on the next part of this great guitar unofficial build-off. The main contestants have already handed in most of their builds, so check those ones out at greatguitarbuildoff.com and on Instagram. I'll be getting on with my build as well, and in the meanwhile, if you want more information and articles on guitar building, please subscribe below and don't forget the little bell to get notified when more of my videos come out. And definitely check out theelectricluthier.com, but don't just read it. Go build a guitar! It's actually the Fender Meteora. 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 It's actually the Fender Meteora.